I would like to present our report, uh, Discrimination at the Junior High Schools, Experiencing the Phenomenon and Ideas of Prevention, the Perspective of Students and Teachers. Uh, so the key objective of the country report was to provide insight into what is perceived by young people as discrimination, what they consider discriminating and how they feel about it. So we didn't um, give them a, our definition of discrimination, we wanted to find out how they feel about it, what they think about it. Um, another uh, objective was to elicit the imagined reaction against discriminatory practices uh, and we wanted to use it as an indicator of their awareness. Uh, what, what they can imagine about the reality is also um, as an indicator of what they know about the uh, reality. And find out what the youngsters' training needs are because we did this research in order to create uh, the trainings Mm, and what kind of actions should be undertaken to counteract discriminatory practices in their opinion. Uh, we wanted also to investigate if uh, pedagogues are able to recognize discriminatory practices, if they see it only on the surface or um, yeah, if they see it in, in depth. Find out, uh, we also wanted to find out about uh, remedial practices they use and ideas how to counteract discriminatory practices. So we conducted uh, four focus groups with uh, 30 youngsters in total um, and four interviews with pedagogues. And a um, study was conducted by four researchers in four junior high schools. Uh, in two of these schools there were foreigners because they were close to asylum centers. And we decided to conduct one focus group with girls only because we uh, noticed that the most difficult type of discrimination to recognize for them was a discrimination based on gender. And we wanted to find out is it because girls didn't want to speak in front of the boys or is it just uh, um, how they think about it, they, they don't see it as a discrimination. Um, so as I said before, we didn't, uh, gave them, uh, we didn't give them a definition of discrimination and at the end we wanted to create uh, together this um, definition. So we gave them some examples of the behavior and asked them if they think it is a discrimination. And as you can see, uh, a very important uh, area was this something in the middle. There was like a discrimination, something in the middle and uh, not discrimination. Uh, yeah, so we could see that um, they can uh, recognize discrimination as the simple cases, but when it was not so obvious, like not uh, maybe cases that they heard about on other anti-discrimination uh, trainings, they uh, had m m more troubles to. Uh, identify it. Uh, yes, and uh, interviews with pedagogues was uh, there were questions about general situation at school, how common discriminatory practices are, and uh, to which of them young people are exposed the most, what reaction to discrimination are the most relevant. And we also did uh, analysis of several short stories of students discriminated against based on economic status, nationality, uh, nationality, appearance and gender and uh, it was the same um, with youngsters that we did three cases uh, discrimination based on nationality, based on uh, economic status and based on gender. Um, so what we found out? Uh, knowledge about the phenomenon um, so discriminatory practices are commonly encountered by youngsters in their daily life. They said that it is so common that it's not even worth speaking about it. It's a quote. Um, the theoretical knowledge about discrimination and ability to recognize it in a simple given examples. Uh, yeah, but when we gave some more complex uh, examples, it was more difficult to them. Um, so. We 
see it as a lack of understanding of discrimination mechanism. Like when you have an example, uh, when you know why somebody is discriminated, like uh, the race or the economical status or something like this, but they get the difficulties to recognize it as a mechanism, as a uh, some social structure. Um, they still have difficulties in thinking about uh, discrimination in their own environment mm -hmm. and they uh, prefer to talk about discrimination on some abstract uh, examples, not about uh, what is around them. And uh, also they were quite suspicious about this, like who sent us here, why we want to talk about it, uh, do we want to talk about something specific that happened and uh, it took us some time to gain the, the trust that we really want to know how they think about it and we didn't come to lecture them. Um, and the discrimination based on race and nationality was the easiest to recognize and the most difficult as I said was discrimination based on gender and uh, even in this group of uh, girls only uh, they they didn't um, identify the behaviors that we uh, present them as a discrimination. Uh, and discrimination based on gender triggered the strongest emotions and unwillingness to work with topics was significant. But I still have to um, precise that there was a big discussion, but they didn't want to work on it as a discrimination. It was more like uh, there's so much of this on, on media, on media, on the internet, uh, so we don't really want to talk about this and we don't really mind. Um, uh, about the reaction to discrimination. Uh, for the youngsters, there is no role of adults in helping youth to deal with the discrimination they experience. And so we noticed a uh, big distrust of teachers. Uh, and conviction that their reaction will worsen the situation. It was really, really strong. Uh, and young people are convinced that they should deal with discrimination themselves. It was a very strong conviction uh, for youngsters, but also for teachers. And this is something that we think we should work uh, on because um, we don't think that, that fighting discrimination is a responsibility of a person who is discriminated. But this is how we find out they perceive it right now. And uh, we want to create these trainings also about some uh, community approach, the whole group, the whole school approach. Uh, yeah, I will skip this <laughs> Uh, yeah, and the effective reaction to discrimination practices should come from the peer group. Mm. Uh, and, uh, what about our uh, teachers? In most of the cases, they recognize this discriminatory character of situations which happen among teenagers. Mm. I, I will make it short. Uh, teachers that we spoke with they seem to care about the discrimination, but more like they cared about it in the past, and right now they are too tired and too hopeless. So they tend to say that it is typical for junior high school students and we can do nothing about this, or the students should be more assertive. Okay, so it's uh, the same attitude, that you should deal with your problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, that sometimes uh, for them the best reaction is to just to grin and bear it. Uh, so, uh, what we can recommend uh, for students in anti-discriminatory actions, a strong impact has to be placed on showing students the mechanism that governs discrimination, not to give them another examples and examples and examples, but to uh, to do something that they can understand the whole mechanism. Um, Anti-discriminatory actions conducted in student groups should refer not only to the general societal context, but also to the situation in school to help students to recognize discrimination in their environment. Um, 
and the efforts uh, counteracting discrimination shown encompass the entire school community. This is what I said before. So not only the perpetrators and victims, but also the witnesses of uh, discrimination, there are also the actors of this situation. And they can act as an actor. Uh, the efforts should uh, contract also on discrimination based on gender and show the structure and expressions of such form of discrimination which are often not apparent and difficult to recognize. And what we can do for pedagogues is the showing the complexity of the problem of discrimination and need to involve all, st all students in uh, contracting actions. Encourage teachers to pay more attention to the environment where discrimination appears showing inadequacy of methods of intervention currently accepted and used by teachers, which is usually uh, top of parents and maybe then a call for the police, which is like a threat to the um, students that they don't really respect as a, as a solution. Uh, and then uh, giving new ideas, methods and tools to prevent discrimination and proposed methods, exercises uh, which will help teachers gain, uh, gain students' trust because it's still something <coughs> that, that it's worth to work on. And the whole empathy and understanding in general. <laughs> Thank you.